It's time for Agriculture, presented by Tricana Farms in Germantown, New York, a small-scale producer of heritage breed livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres. They also produce a full array of garden vegetables, many of them heirloom varieties raised naturally, as well as an assortment of berries, including raspberries, blackberries, gooseberries, black, red, and white currants, mulberries, and elderberries. And now, here's Victoria Cox. Hi friends, it's Victoria. Ever since the fiber phantasmagoria of the Sheep and Wool Festival, I've been shooting emails into the void trying to find a local connection who's interested in either sourcing wool from our immense stockpile or in showing me how to do something with it. Lucky for me, I found both at once when I got a reply from the Fiber House Collective and invited its proprietors to visit. While collective in title and scope, Fiber House is essentially the work of multimedia artist Nika Rabinowitz, who weaves, dyes, and repurposes fiber to create fully local and natural closed-loop textile art and garments. As Mark and I wandered with Nika and her friends, showing them the house and the flock, talking excitedly about current and future projects, we both expressed the feeling that we'd been searching for an opportunity like this for a while, and then everything fell into place. After hearing from Nika about what she planned to create, I developed a minor obsession with the process of wet felting. It seems virtually alchemical that loose strands of hair can be maneuvered into smooth, firm sculptures through a rough wash in a hot bath. I plunged down a deeply arcane internet rabbit hole, scouring sites with names like Homesteaders Today and Downsizer.net grateful to whoever was keeping these pages live despite their lack of updates since approximately 2007. Thanks to the unique time dilation properties of niche internet research, I started to read a few of these websites and only jolted back into awareness of my body several hours later to find myself sitting in a dark house with very cold hands. Felted mittens were an obvious next step. I commandeered the deeper kitchen sink, and I'm still not over the life-changing magnificence of a kitchen with two sinks, and filled it with hot, soapy water. Each of the three sets of instructions that I consulted were very emphatic about the precise temperature. Unfortunately, none of the three agreed. I settled on pretty hot and left my steaming bath of sheep-scented tea to steep for the next four hours, grateful for everyone's sake that I'm no longer sharing a dorm kitchen. After repeating this process of hot water rinses three times, each bath cleaner than the last, I piled the fibers on a screen and left them to dry overnight. As I worked through the next set of steps, cutting a comically large pattern, then layering bits of fleece over top like roof shingles, spraying each layer down with soapy water, it seemed so awkward and unlikely that someone had figured this process out to begin with. But as my project began to firm up and I moved from pre-felt to fulling, it started to make sense. The next step, once the pattern is covered in wool and begins to keep its shape, is to roll it up into a lump and then just really pummel it. The goal is to force the layers of fiber to contract and lock together. And the best way to do this by hand is just to roll, punch, rub, and smack the thing you've just carefully washed and laid out. It turns out, felt gets processed in the only way anything ever gets processed. A period of intense agitation and focused pressure followed by rest. Earlier this week, I got a message from Nika's friend, Marianne, who offered to haul her single treadle spinning wheel up to Kingston and show me the basics of spinning with fleece from our sheep. I was thrilled at her generosity and joined her and another friend, Hannah, for a long afternoon in their apartment, illuminated by the sun through an enormous window. We spun or struggled to spin plenty But as our hands worked, we ended up talking more about history, family secrets, and God than staple length or thread twist. I ended up staying for the next four hours, drinking tea and playing music and laughing as if I'd known both of them for years. During her visit, Nika made an offhand comment about her real goal being to weave connections between people and that fiber was simply the best way she knew to do that. Thinking about the thread that ran between Nika and Marianne to our farm, and from them to me, and then further back, the thread that Mark and Peter wove into this farm and this flock, it's evident that we're all held together through a web of invisible ties. Still, 
There's something very reassuring about being held together by visible ones as well. Agriculture is underwritten by Tricana Farms, LLC, a small-scale producer of heritage-bred livestock and a wide array of vegetables and berries on just over 39 acres in Germantown, New York. More information, 518-537-3815.